I felt something extremely cold grab onto my foot. Okay, and how about we balance that coldness with some hot ass oil? Cluck. Suck. Got your snacks, your cutter buddy, your Adidas. Chat, chat, chat. Oh my God. This happened to my dad when he was a little kid. I think it messed him up a bit emotionally, but he never admitted it. The story freaks me out just imagining it. So I'm pretty sure my dad was 10 years old and he was home alone for whatever reason. He was watching TV in the living room. It was the only TV in the house. And all of a sudden, the TV just shut off. So he got up and turned it back on. It was an old shitty TV, so it wasn't weird at all. When he got back on his couch, it happened again. He got up once again and turned the TV back on. And again it turned off. He repeated this process a couple more times before he started to look for the remote. While looking for the remote, he walked over to check behind one of the couches and saw a man hiding in the corner, holding the TV remote. <coughs> My dad described the man as having long, messy hair and a crazed look in his eyes. He gave my dad a smile, and my dad ran out the front door. Y'all senses are trash. Trash. Non-existent. Y'all are trash. You suck. A bunch of cluck asses. Screaming like a little girl. He went to his neighbors who called the police. The man was still in the house when the police got there, so he was arrested. My dad told me that he still assumes the man was either homeless or crazy. Either way, this story- Or on some, on some cluck shit. He homeless, crazy, on some cluck shit. Downright terrifying. My friend told me about something that happened to her when she was younger, about eight or nine. She was walking home from school and got her key out to let herself into the house. Her single mom worked and came home later on weekdays. As she reached up to put the key in the door, her mom opened it in a dressing gown having left work sick. Instead of greeting her, she looked straight past my friend and immediately said, Who are you? Oh my God! My friend turned around and a man in a long coat hurried back down the path and down the street. Being ill that day had possibly saved her daughter from something potentially horrible happening to her. Second story now. All right? The second story. Yeah, the second story. <laughs> okay. This is this is the second time where the where the where the clock senses are just non existent. Before I start this story. I want to note that Jacob's mother is a drug addict, and his father really didn't have much wrong with him outside of being with his mother. So one night, when Jacob and his father were asleep, they heard a series of loud banging, scratching, and moving noises coming from the mother's room. Jacob's father jumped out of the bed and ran down the hall and started slamming on the door. His mother opened it, yelling at him to quiet down and that he woke her up. He asked her about the sounds. She hadn't been awake to hear them. Jacob's dad would have assumed that she was on something again, but something was wrong. The window was open all the way, and the TV was moved across the room, still plugged in, and had the screen facing outside. Jacob's dad was reasonably scared. He shut the window, got his bat, locked the mother's room from the outside, and made her sleep in the living room. He stayed up most of the night. He woke up Jacob at five. It was still dark out. Jacob went out to the kitchen where his mother already was. A couple minutes later, his dad walked in, wide-eyed. He pointed at Jacob and his mother and held his finger to his lips. They both quieted down. They heard something shuffling around on the roof, going from edge to edge. Jacob's dad had the bat. They sat together in the room, quietly. Minutes later, the sound went away. Jacob's grandmother was called. She was asked if everybody could stay over there for a little while. She said yes and told them she'd come pick them up. 
Jacob finished eating and went to go sit on the couch. There was no TV in that room, so he sat in silence. He looked over at a door to an empty room in the hallway. The door was open. There was a finger wrapped around the side of it. Jacob screamed and pointed to it, and his father grabbed him and ran out. Jacob's mother followed behind. The whole time, I'm getting, getting the heaviest shit I could find and throwing it at the finger. They went to a gas station and sat out front until they saw Jacob's grandmother's truck. Jacob describes how unnatural the finger looked to me. He said it reminded him a little bit of a foam finger in length and width. A what? It was wrapped clear around the door frame, the door itself being latched on the opposite side. They didn't go back to that house much after that. Once they'd gotten everything out of it, they never went back again. Nothing was stolen, and the window in the empty room was open. I was 13 years old. I had the most isolated bedroom imaginable. Mix that with a wild imagination, and I was often up late at night, scared and paranoid, unable to fall asleep. My bedroom was a separate floor of the house, on the opposite side of my parents' room. Oh my god! They had no way of hearing what was going on in my room. That's, what's that, that, that's the setup. That's the setup. Your peoples know what they did from the moment they did it. It was very much intentional. You know what that means? That means that if you experience, if you go, if you, if something clogged up happens in your room, they don't want to hear nothing. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to do, yeah. They ain't, yeah. They're not trying to hear none of that. So it was a seemingly ordinary night with a bit of rain, but not a storm. I woke up and looked at my clock and saw that it was two in the morning. I got an uncomfortable feeling right away, but I didn't know why. I then saw at the edge of my bed, there was a shadow of something around. I just don't understand how things or people can just enter somebody's house and just acting like they just been there for months, just living there, like rent free, eating that mad food, like whatever that thing is at the base of your bed is living good. And I just, how did you not notice that? Just over the head of the edge of my bed, my heart started racing until I realized it was just my hat. My ass. I sometimes hung my hat on one of the wooden poles at the edge of my bed. So I calmed myself down and felt- Why? That, that, would, that would kind of freak me out. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie with you, right? If, this, if I was sleeping in my office, Toby would scare me more often than not. So. <laughs> and so you having like the little, the little hat just hanging. I could sleep. I woke up again around half an hour later and was again startled by the sight of the shadow at the end of my bed. But after my brain started to fully wake up, I remembered it was just my hat again. I, okay. This process happened one more time that night, probably another half hour later. And once again, I was startled by the sight of the shadow. I was getting thirsty, so I reached my hand down to the side of my bed. Ah! Looking for my oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> Water bottle. But I instead found something else. My hat. Ow! And at that instant, I felt my heart drop into my stomach as I almost fell out of my bed trying to turn the lamp on. The light revealed the face of a man peering over the edge of my bed, staring right into my eyes. I let out the highest pitched scream a boy could possibly produce and ran straight past the man and down the stairs of my room. I felt the man try to grab me, but I managed to open the door and run to my parents' room to get my dad. My dad got the baton from under his bed and raced to my room, but he was too late. When we got back to my room, the window was wide open. Apparently, the man jumped out onto the patio roof outside my window. How, do, how did he get in this lock? When no I shit. Kid, I had a huge group of friends that all happened to be on my block. On the weekend nights, we would always play manhunt. AKA hide and go seek for older people. Oh. It worked out great because since we were all neighbors, we used all the front and backyards and even the woods behind our house. Oh my God. We had a rule though, that we couldn't go out more than a backyard's length into the woods. I always used the same hiding spot and nobody ever found me. 
I always hid behind an old rusty barrel that was thrown into the woods years ago. So on this particular night, there were only six of us playing. My friends, Joe and Raj, were on my team. We quickly dispersed as we were the first to hide. I ran to my usual hiding spot, through my backyard, into the woods behind the barrel. Usually I would see the flashlights of the other team shining through the backyards in the woods, but it was unusually quiet this time. And then, I finally heard footsteps nearby. I didn't see a flashlight, so I assumed it was one of my teammates. I whispered Joe and Raj's names, but then whoever it was started charging at me, full on sprinting. I immediately shot up and ran out of the woods to find a new hiding spot in my backyard, but nobody ever came out of the woods. I heard all my friends calling my name from out front, including Joe and Raj, so I assumed something was wrong and went up front. I saw Joe's parents talking with my parents, with all my friends surrounding. My parents seemed a bit relieved to see me, so I was naturally really confused. They told me that a police officer had just passed by and warned them about a serial rapist spotted in the area. Oh my and that god! The kids should stay indoors. Y'all a bit late on that shit, huh? Y'all late as hell. I explained what happened to me in the woods, and my parents started freaking out, making 100% sure that I wasn't lying. They called the police. I really don't know if he was ever caught, but I really hope he was. I try not to think about what would have happened to me had whoever that was caught me. I don't want to say it, but you know. When I was maybe 12 or 13, me, my mom, my stepdad, and two dogs went to the beach for a weekend. We rented an apartment all the way at the back of the shore. The apartment had nothing surreal to it at first sight. We unpacked everything and went out for dinner straight afterwards. We came back and at the time it was maybe 9 p.m. We watched some TV for an hour or so. My mom, stepdad, and two dogs slept on a bed you could make from the couch. They gave me the bedroom with a king-sized bed. I went to bed and used my computer for a while to play some games that I had pre-installed since I knew that there would be no internet connection there. I stayed up playing games pretty late at night. I decided it was time to get some shut-eye and go to sleep. Maybe after five minutes of laying in my bed, complete silence filled the room. But then, all of a sudden, I hear this extremely loud sigh. Oh, oh, oh. I knew it wasn't my parents or the dogs considering the door to the living room was closed. I straight bolted from that room and went to sleep in the bedroom opposite of the master bedroom. My heart was pounding so fast because I was absolutely petrified. Needless to say, no sleep was had that night. I told my parents about it the next morning, and they told me it was probably just my imagination. Okay. But I was certain it was not. Shut up. That's crazy. This story still gives me nightmares to this day. I was staying with one of my best friends in North Carolina where I had a job interview. I was coming from New Jersey, and my friend Mike offered to let me crash in his place for a few days. He didn't necessarily live too close to the company I was interviewing for, about two hours away. But I also just wanted to see one of my good friends again. Two hours? So this happened after the second interview. I came back to Mike's place in a good mood as I had been offered the job on the spot. We celebrated in the yard that night with a few friends and a few beers, or a lot of beers. We stayed up late and basically got shit-faced. People were coming and going all night. That's the kind of person Mike is. He didn't really keep track of who entered and left his house. Yeah, that's a no-no. That's a red flag. That's hella red flags. That's one of the most biggest red flags. If you got, if you know somebody like that, cut, 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 cut your losses. Cut your damn losses. So at about four in the morning, after everyone had left, we called it a night. I struggled to make it up the stairs into the bathroom. I drained the sink and soaked my face with hot water. And it was at that moment that I thought I could see something in the corner of my eye. I turned to the half-open door and saw an eye poking in at me through the crack of the door. You gonna poke your eyeball? Okay, well, I'm gonna poke your eye shits. Boop, boop, boop. I let out a loud, holy shit, and in my drunk and klutzy state, I fell to the floor. When I got back on my feet, the eye was gone. I stumbled out of the bathroom and called Mike's name. I heard him call out in response from downstairs in the kitchen. 
It couldn't have possibly been him. I didn't hear anyone go down the stairs. But I asked if he was up there anyway. Expectedly, he replied with a no. I can't remember fully, but I assume I just brushed it off under the assumption that I had too much to drink. I made it to the guest bedroom and basically fell onto the bed, barely managing to throw the covers over myself. You know when you're drunk you fall asleep easier. That's an understatement. I think I fell asleep seconds after falling onto that bed, only to wake up after an unknown duration of sleep. I immediately felt the unbearable headache coming on and began to rub my head. It was probably a little before sunrise. The room was a bit chilly. My foot was sticking out of the covers, hanging over the edge of the bed. And then it happened. I felt something extremely cold grab onto my foot. Okay, and how about we balance that coldness with some hot ass oil? Clock, this would suck if the lid was on. I mean, off. I mean, what? On what? start stroking it. I then heard a raspy voice whisper the words, can you help me? Oh, Jesus. I sat up and screamed at the top of my lungs before sprinting out of the bed and out of the room, leaving Mike at the top of the stairs. I called the police and they arrived shortly. The intruder was actually a woman, a woman in her late 40s who clearly suffered from some kind of addiction. She admitted to simply walking right into Mike's house and hiding in a closet. The eye I saw was hers, peeking at me while in the bathroom. I always make sure to cover my feet with my sheets now. Just have something solid at the... At, the dead just of have something solid. Don't, because if you just have sheets that's just dangling off the side of your bed, people can still hide underneath your bed. So have something solid or have something, you know, um, that's stable, that's not, I don't know really, have something underneath your bed. That's all I'm saying. Turn Cali. Me and a couple buddies were on a skiing trip by South Lake Tahoe. We stayed in a big luxurious log cabin for a few nights. On the third night during a blizzard, I got up to get a glass of water late in the night. As I crossed the cabin over to the kitchen, there was a frantic knock at the door. I was a bit spooked that somebody would be knocking this late. I thought maybe I should just ignore it and let them go away. But I realized they knew we were there, as my car was parked right outside. I also had the thought that maybe somebody was in trouble and needed to get out of the dangerous weather. I tiptoed over to the door and waited for another knock. It didn't take too long before the knocking came again, this time much louder and more frantic. Who is it? I asked. Nobody answered. I asked again louder, but there was still no answer. After I asked this, there was no more knocking. I grew curious and eventually opened the door a crack with the what? chain lock still on just in case. Jesus! Nobody was outside. I undid the lock and opened the door completely. There were footprints in the snow leading away from the cabin. For whatever stupid reason, maybe I felt some kind of guilt and worry for a person in need. I don't. I don't. You be hauling ass to my house because you got chopped the hell up. Or you got sliced up. Or you got beat up. Or, or you just got clocked up just in general. And you bleeding for, how do you say it? Profusely? Don't come to my house. I'm not helping you. Sorry. Tough. Yeah. It can be thunderstorming like a mother clucker, right? Flooding like shit. Lightning hitting the shits. I'm not helping you. It could be an earthquake. The same earthquake that, that happened in that movie 2012. I'm not helping you. No, no. It'd be a snowstorm. I'm not helping you. It can be a tsunami coming. The same tsunami that we saw in the interstellar. The one that reached the clouds. I'm not helping you. <laughs> Sorry. Slipped on my boots and jacket and stepped out into the storm to follow the footsteps before they were completely filled. The footsteps led me to the edge of the property before completely stopping. I shouldn't not. 
The footprints completely ended. Not a sign of vehicle marks, a struggle, nothing. It was as if whoever made the tracks was standing still right where I was. I felt disturbed and ran back into the cabin and slammed the door shut behind me, making sure to lock it. Before I could even gather my thoughts, the frantic knocking at the door resumed. My heart started pounding and I started to scream for my friends. One by one, they all rushed down to see what was wrong. When we opened the door, there was nobody there. The footprints were already filled. I never could prove what happened to my friends. I don't blame them for not believing me. I almost don't believe myself, but I know what happened. I just can't even try to explain it. It still freaks me out to this day. So it's paranormal. It's paranormal. Paranormal. My friend and I were going to a party a few hours out of town, so we decided to stay at her family's holiday house about an hour south of the party. We arrived around mid-afternoon, and it was winter in the holiday town, so the area was completely empty. No other cars on the street. When we left for the party, I spent a moment deciding whether to pull the gate all the way closed. I'd had some trouble opening it earlier when we arrived, and if we were getting home late at night, I didn't want to be stuck outside. I ended up deciding to shut it for security. Thank you. The party was great. We got back to the house around 12.30 and the gate was open. I immediately felt on edge because not only did I know that I had locked it, but I knew it couldn't just blow open in the wind. But I didn't want to make a big deal, so I was vague when my friend asked me if I'd shut it. We went inside and decided to make a snack. I was wandering through the house when suddenly my friend- So now you lying. So if I get clucked up because you lied, dash your ass. Raced from the kitchen into the hallway and virtually tackled me to the ground. She was convinced she'd heard someone walking around outside. We tried to calm ourselves down, but we had no cell reception and there was no one else around. Over the next half hour or so, as we sat in the hallway paralyzed with fear, we heard footsteps outside and the back door being Jimmy. We decided we had to leave. So we gathered everything up and got ready to make a break for the car. Just as we were at the front door ready to leave, there was a huge bang in the backyard and suddenly what sounded like hundreds of birds started screaming. We legged it to the car, ended up starting it with all our stuff still on our laps. We hadn't bothered to even put in the back seat. As we reversed out the driveway, we saw somebody running up the side of the house towards us. We sped the entire way home and didn't sleep at all that night. Alright, man. When I was 10, and my youngest brother Ben was only one, there was this one weekend that my parents were painting our bedrooms, <laughs> so we would have to sleep in the basement. What? Pull out you got it. You got it. You got it. Sleep in the basement. You got it. You got it. You got it. Down there that turned into a bed, and Ben had an extra crib down there. I was only 10, so sleeping in a pitch dark basement was very uncomfortable. Somehow, having Ben down there made me feel a bit safer though. Oh yeah? He would wake me up in the middle of the night crying and for some reason tending to him made sleeping down there a little less scary. But it was this one time that I woke up to him screaming. Not crying, screaming. Shit! Like no one year old should. I was scared shitless immediately and ran over to him to see what was wrong. He was standing up looking at me, pointing to something. Ah! I looked in the direction he was pointing at. He was pointing into the pitch dark boiler room right next to his crib. I felt like a thousand knives just stabbed me in the chest. And even through the heat of the moment, I vaguely remembered the faint sound of something falling over in the boiler room. And I felt as if I was being watched in that basement. I grabbed Ben and got the hell out of there as quickly as possible. I have never gone back down in that basement. So what you do? What y'all do after that? The, 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 Jesus Christ! There were so many answers. There was there were so many questions. I need I need I need answers to for that last story. No, nah, you can't just. That was a cliffhanger. Jesus, you know the videos I really like. I don't know. The ones that I really enjoy, I don't.
It's kind of hard to explain because I like all Mr. Nightmare videos. But, uh, I think I like, he hasn't done these in a while. Um, there's this video, I think, hopefully it's still on, on his, on his, I know I reacted to it, but I don't know if it's still on his page. 10 nightmarish animals that you, that you would, that you're glad are extinct. I remember reacting to it, and my, my reaction to those, and seeing those animals, was crazy. Like, I like stuff like that. Uh, so we can bring like some of those back, or like, I like when Mr. Nightmare has like actual footage. I like those. Um, but overall, Mr. Nightmare is still number one. Keep it cool, keep it kind of what? Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.